Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be leading you through step-by-step -step painting this beautiful Kingfisher in watercolor. Here's a list of the brushes that I'm going to be using for today's painting. Now we have varying shapes and sizes as well as types of hair today, so feel free to experiment with what works for you or what you prefer already. I'm going to be using my Arches 100% Cotton Hot Press Block paired with my favorite watercolors, Grumbacker's Finest and Magello Mission Gold Class watercolors. All of the products used in today's video can be found in the description box below if you'd like to follow along directly with what I am using. Now let's go ahead and get started. To start off, we are going to mix two shades of blue on our ceramic palette. The first is going to be a teal color, which will be a large portion of this Kingfisher's coloring. You can make this color by combining blue with a touch of green. And the second color is going to be more on the blue side, a very beautiful royal blue. Now every watercolor kit is different, so I recommend choosing a rich, vibrant blue, whichever one you have available. The first step in our painting is to go ahead and paint in the first base layer of color all around this Kingfisher. I prefer to start with the rich blues and allow those to dry before moving into the other colors in this beautiful bird species. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and mix two new colors needed for this portrait. One will be the body of the Kingfisher, which will start off with a very soft, beautiful light blue that I have watered down quite a bit. And the second is the gorgeous orange markings made from mixing orange and yellow ochre together. Unfortunately, this section of the painting did not record properly, but as you can see, I have laid down a simple base layer on the body and the side of the face in both our orange and our blue. I will continue to work my way around the portrait next with the gorgeous orange tones we have created. The orange can be found on the side of the head, the belly of the kingfisher, and of course, the beak area. Once that has dried, I'm going to go ahead and add in brown to my Kingfisher's throat, side of the head, and the eye area. These will act as our first base layers and eventually our shadows on this bird painting. You can select any brown that you have for this section, or you can even use a shade of gray. Next, we can add in our base layer for our Kingfisher's beak. Now, I have decided to start with a beautiful dark teal color, but even a navy color would do just fine. Whatever you have in your kit, work your way around the orange and get that first layer dropped in and allow it to dry. I'm going to let this Kingfisher dry and move on to the last base layer section, and that is of the branch below this bird. I am starting with a simple dark brown color, and I'm going to work my way around this branch and block in all the areas of brown that I can see. I can go ahead at this time and add in the secondary color to this branch green. I am mixing my yellow and my green together to create a very vibrant lime type color and this will act as my base for later on in the painting. Once all of your base layers have dried, we can go ahead and start to work on our secondary layers. And these are going to be adding details and shadows to our Kingfisher. I love to work in smaller sections throughout my paintings, so I will be focusing primarily on the head first and the details that I see within it. I am taking a darker teal and a darker orange brown color and adding in all of the feathers and the shadows that I can see in my reference. We want to make sure that we leave some of the base layer to shine through, so be sure to only put your shadow colors in select areas. This will slowly start to build up the layers of feathers and depth to this painting. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the eye by adding in another layer of black. We will come back and highlight this space later, but for now I am creating a shadow, being sure to leave enough space to add in white marker later on for the catchlight. 
Let's go ahead and add another layer to our beak and make this area much darker and more vibrant. I am using the same dark teal color as before, but with less water on my brush to make this area more defined. I'm being mindful of the areas of highlight we are going to add in later on and only shading in some areas to create depth and a much more visually appealing space. Just as we did with the kingfisher's head, I want to go ahead and add in a secondary layer to the body. I am using much less water for these areas as I want the paint to be thicker and more opaque but still apply smoothly. I will add in the varying colors to the body, such as a dark teal, a much more vibrant blue on top of that initial base layer, and even a slight brown to the bottom of this kingfisher's feathers. Some slight variation in these colors works perfectly as no feather patch is the same and it will have adjustments depending on the lighting. So whether the bird is wet, dry in the sun or the shade, or even the conditions of the photo or reference itself will adjust these colors accordingly. Now this next section in the painting is very important to ensuring this kingfisher starts to come to life and can be achieved in two ways. I personally love to add colored pencil to my watercolor paintings as in my work I strive for a very opaque, saturated, vibrant style and with watercolor alone I just can't seem to get it to look the way that I want it to. As an artist I am still learning watercolor and that seems to be my area of struggle when transitioning from using acrylic so often to using watercolor. If you're following along to this tutorial, you can add in the areas that I am currently creating now with a darker, more saturated layer of watercolor, or you can create it with colored pencil as I am doing here. Whatever you prefer and have available to you is what I always recommend. Just keep in mind to try to color match as best as possible to your base layers and continue to add in these layers for more depth and a more realistic painting. I want to talk a moment about using white colored pencil and jelly rollers with your watercolors. I have found that by having a white colored pencil and a white gel pen in my art kit has made highlighting and making my paintings pop off the page much easier than let's say masking off sections or leaving them lightly painted. To be honest, I am lazy so I want the easiest, most effective method to do this. For example, on this kingfisher, I will use my white colored pencil or my jelly roller to add in areas of highlight on the feathers that are spotted or glistening in this photograph, as well as the very bright, shiny, reflective areas on the beak. Even if you decide to create this entire painting in watercolor, which you absolutely can and I encourage, adding in a few select highlights in white pencil may work for you. Especially if you accidentally make an area too dark, it is the perfect way to bring light back into your painting in the easiest way. Before we move on to the body of the kingfisher, I want to add in another layer of gray to the throat area. Until now, we have pretty much left this area alone and it is definitely in need of some love, especially to match and be seamless with the top of the head. So I'm going to take a nice medium gray, whether it's colored pencil or watercolor, and add in some feather details and solidify the shape of the shadow. Keep in mind the beak is going to be casting some form of shadow as well as the feathers on the shoulder depending on the position of this bird and the lighting. So keep in mind of that fact if you are using a different reference or following along today. Now that the head is finished, we can go ahead and begin working on the body of this bird. 
I am mixing three to four different variations of teal and blue to create some interesting gradients seen in the wings. I am using less water on my brush so that my paint is more opaque and I'm going to add in some shadows where the feathers overlap or I may see some slight changes in color in those back feathers. For this section, I am using the thinnest brush that I have available, and that is the Aqua Elite Small Round. I want to be as precise as possible and cautious not to add too much paint at one time. With watercolor, it is easier to layer slowly and add the details a bit at a time, as we don't really have the option with, let's say, oils or acrylics to cover over our mistakes as easily. So you can see that I'm being very cautious and adding a bit of color at a time. Once that has dried, I'm going to mix a very bright blue onto my palette. This will be the same color used for the base of this Kingfisher's body, but now with less water on my brush, and this will ensure that the color is much more opaque and vibrant. I will be going around the entire midsection of this bird, which will be the fluffy feathers in between the wings. Taking that same blue body color, I'm going to add a bit of a darker blue to it to create the beautiful tail color on this Kingfisher. I will use a slightly larger brush as I am able to work more comfortably in this area. This area is much larger than let's say those individual feathers and all of the tail is the same color so far. This next section in the painting is to me the most important, but also the most enjoyable. This is where we can really start to dive into the depths of this bird, just as we did with our face layers. I am going to take each of my original base colors and add more paint to my brush and less water, along with that sometimes adding either brown or black to darken the shade in my color mixing. This will create a much darker, more opaque consistency in my watercolor mixtures. Following my reference, I'm going to block in all of the dark areas around this bird's feathers and start to show where the overlap, shadows, and other important details are. You can see when I paint the feathers, I do a sort of U-shape motion with my brush, leaving some of the lighter base area to shine through. With any medium, we want to make sure we do not cover over all of our hard work and let the layers we are building do the work for us when creating detail and when creating realism. For the remainder of the back section, I'm going to add in another layer of shadow and highlight with my colored pencils. Depending on how you are following along, you will either add in another layer of shadow with your watercolors, so where I'm drawing them in with colored pencil, you will take your paint and your brush, making those shadows more opaque, or you can add in the shadows with your colored pencils as I am doing here. Regardless of which method you decide, I will also add in white colored pencil for my highlights along with my jelly roller. I am being very selective of where I put these as I do not want to overdo it and make everything highlighted. I am selecting areas at the bottom of the feathers and making sure to round my highlight to follow the shape of the feathers as well as the bird's wings.
Once those layers have dried or been completed, I'm going to add one final pass through on the fluffy feather section and darken some of those areas. This section will change in lightness depending on how tight the bird's wings are together, the position of your light source, and definitely other factors as well. But for this reference, I did feel as though it needed to be a touch darker. The same technique I will apply to the tail of this kingfisher as well, adding more color and saturation to increase the brightness and the vibrancy. The last section of our painting is going to be to fill in the details of the tree stump that this kingfisher is sitting on. To begin, I will start off by mixing a darker green than our original lime green that we have made and plot in the areas of shadow and darker foliage on this stump. For this, we do not have to be perfect as foliage grows in all different directions, shapes, and types. So I just want to illustrate that it is there and not necessarily paint in each blade of grass or patch of moss that I can see. While that area is drying, I'm going to go and do the exact same thing with the wooden area of the stump. I will dive into a nice dark brown color and go over this section darkening any of the areas that I see are shadowed by the kingfisher or may just need some extra attention and detail. Remember, with watercolor, we can go into these layers slowly, so if you are unsure, use more water on your brush to create a much more transparent layer first, and then continue to add layers as you go and darken up the area accordingly. Lastly, I will add more shadows and details with my colored pencils, which you of course can add with your watercolors if you prefer. And I will also add in some highlights to this stump to create a cohesive painting with the same style as the Kingfisher. At this stage in my process, I always recommend taking a step back from your painting and getting a better view of the entire piece. So far, we have been working in select sections, and now I want to make sure that the entire piece is cohesive, and if anything needs to be adjusted or changed before I call this piece finished. I will go back and forth throughout the entire piece, normally with my watercolor and my colored pencils, until I feel as though it is close to the reference as possible and I am happy with the painting. A big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Chart Pack, Grumbacker, and Molotol. Thank you so much for your support. Their links can be found in the description box below, as well as places where to purchase their art products for your own art toolkit. Want brighter, more vibrant watercolors? Check this video out to find out how.